Alright, you guys wanted some parts details. I'm going to give you some parts details. Hope this is not too boring and I hope this helps somebody. Okay, this is going to be, again, recap. A budget LT1 semi-quasi rebuilt with, oops, stock pistons and everything else. Look how that chem dick cleaned up this uh, piston. Really nice. Still got to do some more cleaning, but yeah. Damn phone. Let's shut that phone off. Okay, let me get this off my chest. First and foremost, what bothers me about the automotive parts industry, and, and this applies to a lot of other industries, and it's gotten worse over the years, is the relabeling, rebranding of the same parts made by companies. And you can be charged one price for one thing and one price for another thing just because of what it says on the box, but it's still the same product. So that just drives me crazy. I'll figure to get that off my chest. And I'm going to give you some examples of what I'm talking about. Now, the parts that I've chosen here are a combination of experience, what was available in my area, and knowing what works and what doesn't work, okay? First and foremost, let me give a shout out to, hope for that comes in, All State Engine Supply. They are extremely knowledgeable set of guys there. They're out of Saddlebrook, New Jersey, if you guys are in this area, or I will put all their information down below. They got everything in stock. They are 100 times better than like Summit or Jegs or, that's just the knowledge. 40 years of guys owning and operating a, a private family business over there, large place, um, that's enough said. Okay, so I had a good lesson from one of the old timers there, the owner and operator of this facility of explaining engine parts better than I even knew and understood and opened my eyes up to a few things and this is why I picked these parts. Okay. First things first, we're gonna talk about rod bearings and why I chose these type of rod bearings. And it goes back to my story about relabeling, rebranding packages. This is Engine Pro, part number CB663, P as in Paul, eight, rod bearing. They've been around forever. This is the same thing like Engine Tech, they relabel their stuff. And this bearing here is a P-series Clevite bearing for a lot less money. I mean, they're cheap as, as can be as, as already, but going through this brand, you you know, so, but you're, you're essentially getting a, a, a cleave light bearing. I mean, so, a little dirty here, my fingerprints all over it for me talking, but the reason why I'm choosing this particular thing for the rod bearings is that this is the factory rod bearing. This is the cleave light bearing. Notice the coating difference. This is a tri-metal. This is a bimetal hard aluminum. What I found is that the tri-metals, this is a proven thing for the P-series, and this is why I went with the P-series instead of the H-series. This is a kind of a compromise between the two, a hard bearing and a soft race bearing. An H-series race bearing is, is softer, can absorb more shock load, but this is gonna be a mild build. This is not gonna be super high horsepower, but I need something that has a little compromise between both worlds. If you want to know more about bearings and the different type of materials and all that stuff, let me know, or there's tons of videos about this, but P-Series, definitely good street strip type of thing. It'll take some power. Okay, second on the bearing hit list. And I'll get into more detail about this later on. Engine Tech. <laughs> Engine Tech has been around for a while. They've sold a lot of different stuff a lot under a lot of different part numbers, but Engine Tech bearings are. Oh, I can't get the, oh. These are King bearings, relabeled as Engine Tech, which is crazy. Good bearing company made out of Israel, repackaged for Engine Tech. Part number is BC296JSTD for standard. Sounds like a disease. I also got. Another set of main bearings, BC296J001. The 001 is 0.1 thousandths thicker. That means that if it gives me some options when playing around with the clearances, I can mix and match the bearing halves. I'll get more into that later, but you know, whatever. Second on the list of hit list of, of parts that are misconstrued or uh, there's like a voodoo around all this stuff here, which is the oil pump. We are definitely, uh, let me go to the part number. O is an operator, P is in Paul, 3104 HV. So the HV means it is a high volume oil pump. But the reason why I'm using this pump over like a stock styles pump is that one, first of all, obviously it's a high volume oil pump. Second of all, it's a three quarter inch uh, pickup tube. I believe the 97, now 95 or 96 LT1s came with standard factory three quarter inch, but a non 
high volume pump. This motor came with the 5.8, small one, hold on, I'll grab it for you. Show you the difference. You could just tell right away. <laughs> Sorry. The pickup tube difference. Look at that. Much bigger. And look at the difference between the two pumps. Or a standard pump versus a high volume pump. Look at the depth of the gears. How much taller this one is. And this is a funny story because from what I understand, this, this is definitely um, a DNJ part, okay? I believe made in Taiwan. They uh, actually have a good reputation of making pumps. And also, you guys are like, oh, melon, 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 melon oil pump, everything like that. From, but but from, what I, from my understanding is that even though that it has a stamped USA on the uh, body of the casting, that the internal impeller gills are made in China or overseas. They don't cut their own gears anymore, but they make the housings and assemble it in the USA. So don't get, don't get twisted over a pump like this. This is gonna work just fine. I've used these in many cars, zero problems. Um, and then we'll go ahead and show you how to do all like the little fancy schmancy work inside of the pump here, take it apart and do some stuff here, some voodoo stuff here that is a tried and true method. All right. <laughs> Same brand, DNJ, which is sort of like an engine tech they're sort of like an engine tech company because uh, they do the same thing. They rebrand other people's uh, products. And this is actually a Hastings, Hastings piston rings. Part number is PR3142 standard because it's a standard bore size, but we're going to open those rings up. It says ductile. I believe they are talking about the, the, the rings are ductile, but the top rings are actually molly coated. And they are cheap but the quality is absolutely there these are definitely something you would get these are the cast iron side second ring top rings are molly coated and of course you get your oil control rings and i know some of you are going to disagree on some of these parts and everything but this is what's available to me that i can get my hands on directly talk to the people directly and see you know and if i have a problem with any parts i can return them so that's the advantage of my area okay and so basically what this auto this uh engine supply place did is that they kind of gave me like an engine tech type of package deal with all this stuff and mix and match some of the parts that i needed that i'm requesting extra such as the high volume oil pump and the molly rings and i wanted to try metal bearings for the rod bearings. And then we'll get, again, we'll get all into the bearing stuff when we assemble the motor and all that kind of stuff and everything. But this is just like an overview and I hope I'm not talking too much. Another upgrade that you not, must do when you're doing a high volume oil pump or anything with an oil pump in an LT1 small block Chevy, blah, 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 is a hardened shafted with a sleeve on here. This goes on top of the oil pump. Voila, oh, sorry wrong way basically this engages into this pump gear sleeve it goes I actually the wrong way hold on that way pin it this has a, a, a dowel pin that we can put in here but this is a hardened shaft this will not break um, but it very rarely the pump sh br the shafts break unless the pump seizes for some reason or another for low but, but the main thing that you're looking for and the reason why you're gonna get a shaft like this is this metal collar here the factory as plastic so this over time the plastic gets brittle breaks comes apart it's got the factory yep this is why you never use a factory oil pump uh what do you call it dry shaft lid is breaks garbage and there's nothing holding this into the into the shaft so basically it destroys itself because it starts walking around moving around comes out just does bad stuff so this is a i don't understand why gm never did this for their oil pumps but Tried and true product. This is a must upgrade. Okay, and I didn't go too crazy on the gaskets because they got just a basic engine tech gasket. And to my surprise, because you know everybody's got Felpro, Felpro in their name and all that kind of stuff, but these gaskets are top notch. I, I was 
pleasantly surprised of the quality of the gaskets. So the Engine Tech uh, kit comes with everything that you need. All the gaskets, valve cover gaskets, valve cover seals, which you're not gonna, I'm sorry, valve cover gaskets, uh, valve guide seals, the Viton ones, or Viton, however you call it, the positive locking ones. Um, this is pretty good, comes with this actually. Intake manifold and exhaust manifold gas the gaskets, which we're not gonna we're gonna use the intake, but not the exhaust, obviously, because we have headers on the car. But it comes with good quality intake gaskets. Comes with an oil pan gasket, good quality. You know, also it comes with within the oil pan gaskets because some of them don't come here. Is let me see if I can see that. Is the gasket for the oil housing, which is nice. It has comes with a rubber seal. I don't think the Felpro gaskets, the single oil pan gaskets, come with that seal. So that's actually a bonus. Timing set with the proper water pumps and all that kind of stuff. You know, all the basic gaskets, all the rubber stuff that you need. Most importantly, it comes with head gaskets for the same price. And I already looked at them. They are actually pretty damn good. For a factory style gasket, it is equivalent, about the same. It is the same as a freaking Felpro. Don't get people misleading you about not that. But most importantly, gasket head tech sometimes a lot of you guys want to go straight up to the mls or the the full race gaskets and that's understandable if you're using a lot of power and a lot of stuff but if you're using a set of used heads on a used block you want a gasket that will conform to the surfaces and this type of gasket does it has the steel backing but it has like this coating on it i don't know what it's called a graphite coating that helps bond to the block and the head for good gasket ceiling that's what it's supposed to be there for and it's got the fire rings it's got like a nice coating on here so nothing leaks around it's a really i'm I, I, i'm shocked about the price because let's get into the price real quick now i did add another set of bearings um which brought the price a little bit over 500 dollars. but without these bearings i think these bearings are like 34 or 40 something dollars the, the everything that you see here including the high volume oil pump piston rings you know all that kind of good stuff just under four, uh, on just under five hundred dollars, four hundred and some odd dollars and change, which is a bargain when you consider because a lot of the engine kits will just sell you the gaskets and the piston rings and uh, the, um, no, they'll sell you the the gaskets, the the bi metal connecting rods. So that means the factory style bearings like this, which I don't want because I want something a little more high performance. Cast iron rings without the Molly rings. So for a little little changes here and there plus i got the high volume oil pump and pickup too that's a really good price for this budget build oh yeah forgot one more thing <laughs> oh yeah and when a cheap harbor freight engine cylinder hone this is a controversial subject some people like to use the bowl hone i like to use these i think these give her a better um finish but again these are not for a boring tool they don't bore the cylinders they don't do you don't buy this for that you buy it to deglaze the cylinder walls and to put some cross hatching if the cylinder walls are good so this we'll get into is a different topic and subject and talk about this later on but yeah figure that to the parts list of stuff and then again we'll get into more of the other parts that are coming as far as for the top end when we do the top end of the motor and I'm going to go through the installation in the next couple of videos. You're going to see me reinstalling this factory crank and rods because of what I want to do is I want to find out before I start installing new bearings, I want to see where the old bearings are at. So I'm going to get the measurements off of the old bearings, see where the crank is, see where the rods are, see the way the factory set it up. And then we can go ahead and start installing and assembling the bottom end of this motor, getting this motor back together again. So. All right, hopefully I didn't talk too much. Hopefully you guys learned something. Yeah, thank you for watching.